Yeah, 390 horsepower. We're talking some fucking muscle. Hey, man, I know you got this thing out of a comic book. I saw the ad, 295. It was right next to the Sea Monkeys, man. You see that over there? That's white light. <laughs> see the shoes on that thing? You gotta get some tires for this. These are pizza cutters, man. <laughs> hey, YouTube. So I'm starting the installation of the new ski skins. You can see how much wider they are than the stock skis. I think these are gonna work great for my ute. So first step, use my handy dandy snow machine jack. It's really, really nice. The VK has a good front bumper. And get the skis up off the ground. And then what I'll do, pull the cotter pins, nut, drive the bolt out, drop the skis. I'll have to remove the skags. And then you put the ski skin on the ski, put the skags back through, tighten them up. And then I will have to drill a hole here and in the back. So it's gonna come out somewhere here and on the back of the ski, pop rivet it, and that'll be done with one ski. And then I'll repeat to the other side. So let's get at it. All right, so I've got nut taken out. Well, before that, you know, you had to take that cotter cotter pin out because you've got the uh, little holes in the end of the bolt you want to put those back in or get a new one put it in if you couldn't save your old one because that'll prevent uh, the ski from falling off if you lose the nut for whatever reason so anyway I can't do this probably with both hands I have to lift the ski up and then I'll just slide this out the ski will drop and then I'm gonna show you guys something. Uh, one of the issues with having a strut, I think this is called a bracket, I looked up in the parts uh, catalog last night, and that prevented me from putting Polaris float skis on this machine. So I had a set, and I thought, oh, I'll just put the wider skis on, and they wouldn't fit because you need enough room for the ski to, to articulate, and the Polaris ski has a whole bunch of ribs and reinforcement in here. It wasn't compatible with this. And I don't know if a um, guy wrote off the Yamaha VK Pro. I looked at the website, didn't look like it had skis any wider than this. Uh, but anyway, I don't know if they're compatible with this machine or not. Okay, so you also have the little rubber bumper and it's got a metal plate. Make sure you put it on. So the ramped portions facing forward, maybe it says on there. Sometimes they do. Polaris ones do, or they only fit in one way. I can't remember, but anyway, kind of screwed up. I think you could on this, and then your skis are gonna flop kind of funny. But you can see how much that's recessed in there to make room for the bottom of the strut so the ski can articulate. So if you do try to fit wider aftermarket skis, just keep that in mind. I think I looked at putting on I had a set of CNA, what are those, XTs, I think. And what are they, were they eight inches wide? And this wasn't recessed and it wouldn't fit. All right, now to uh, take my skags off. Is it a 14? Naturally it isn't. So I've got the ski, or the skag off the ski, and it has four nuts, four washers. Nuts and washers go here thread onto these. Uh, you also need to make sure you don't lose these two washers, which went on either side of that ski bolt. So either side of your, the bottom of the strut. All right, I think I'm gonna measure this just uh, for the sake of doing it. And then we will start putting on the ski skin. Okay, so your stock V case skis, I don't know what they come in and you're up or Russia, but here in the US, they're seven inches wide. It's kind of hard for me to get this thing to show you exactly, but um, yeah, there you go. Actually, it turned out perfect. Um, seven inches wide. For my use, that is not wide enough. Uh, they drive me nuts in the springtime because they knife in through the snow. Uh, it, it actually, I've had, I've had this even in a deep snow, I had that one video and this thing where it went wherever it wanted. I wasn't, it was hard to control it. So the ski skins, well, isn't that interesting? They say 11 inches wide, but they're not. 
They're like 10. Uh, what was that, 5 sixteenths? Anyway, so they're not quite 11 inches wide. Well, better than uh, better than what I have. I mean, they look monster big, so let's put these on. Okay, so what I found to be the easiest thing to do is put your ski upside down, and then I drop the skag through the top of the ski, and it fit, no problem. I wasn't fighting anything. I was a little bit concerned. Uh, the studs protruded through. There was enough thread to easily grab the nuts. So I'll go and I'll tighten these down. And then we'll have to drill a hole there in here to rivet those in. You're gonna to wanna to do that, because otherwise, if you back up, you have a good chance of getting these peeling back off or getting alders, all kinds of brush stuck in there. Here would be terrible. You have a really good chance of scooping, or else you're gonna get snow and ice buildup underneath there. So we'll just make sure that's all nice and tight when I pop rivet it. And I have a feeling they gave steel pop rivets, so those have a really good uh, gripping, uh, what I wanna say. This should squeeze it down nice and tight. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they actually had directions <laughs> with the rivet. So <laughs> you can just follow the directions of how to do it. Anyhow, I didn't, I just looked through them now. Um, it, there's nothing there that's surprising to what I've already described. So these are steel and I like that they have a washer that'll go on the other side of the ski. And you can see right here, how they show how to do it. You use it as a template, you drill your hole, and then you'll rivet it. I wonder if I can zoom in. I'm kind of curious which way those, the rivets go. This is a 3 16 bit. I'm gonna put this side of the rivet on, this, on the bottom of the ski side. That makes sense to me. It does, I guess it doesn't really tell you, but that's what makes sense to me. So something that's really nice about this is the rivet has plenty of grip range. So you're not gonna fight, you know, trying to get the washer on and hold it. So what I like to do is I'm gonna put my finger on this washer and hold it, press it tight up against the ski. Cause sometimes this will, uh, if you don't make sure it's squeezed together, the rivet will pop before before it sucks down all the way, and then your rivet's gonna be loose and you didn't do it properly. So I'll get this one done. I'll do the same on the bottom of the ski. And then I'll start on the other side. So as I was working, uh, started to compress the rivet, I realized I wanna make sure this thing is really sucked together. So I just went and got a clamp. You could have another person hold it as well. Um, and actually, if I had done this in my shop, I would have used my air rivet gun because that's that's quite the rivet to uh, pop. Okay, I'll do the other side now. So what I ended up having to do, this rivet was actually a pain because I couldn't use my clamp to squeeze this together. It got in the way of where I needed to attach the rivet or attach the rivet gun to the rivet. Um, I'm doing this by myself. Somebody else, you know, had uh, another set of hands that could help squeeze this together. But I needed both hands to compress that manual rivet gun. These these were quite the rivets to pop. So I just use my air rivet gun. Uh, I've had this one for quite a while. It's worked fine. I don't I don't remember where I bought it. Um, but uh, anyway, if you have a snow machine, well, then you need an air compressor. Anyhow, you don't you don't need this rivet gun to do it. I just did it because it was easier for me. And I'm going to do the other, when I do the other, put the ski skin on the other ski, I'll do the same thing. Um, it just makes quick and easy work of it. Uh, but otherwise, you can do it, I mean, I say, you can do it with a manual rivet gun. Particularly if you get one that's bigger. Oh, what I wanted to remember to show seven you. Seven millimeter deep well socket. And uh, I pressed the washer tight and I held up the other end. So I squeezed it, had it on a surface, and then I popped the rivet so everything is... Nice and tight and as it should be. Okay, next step, I'll do the other one, um, and then put them on and go for a ride this afternoon and try them out. 
something to pay attention to when you pull your skag. That goes on in front of the ski where it makes that 90 degree turn and then the smooth part is in the back. I don't know if they'll go on the opposite way. I haven't tested. It's got a recess for that area. I think it's kind of self-evident because that's got that bevel portion. Anyway, just something for you to pay attention to. So something I noticed that was different with this particular ski skin as opposed to my other one, the gap here was significantly wider than it was on my other ski skin. And I can't really tell you why, because the ski skin is not like it can go forward or back because it lines up with your the mounting holes for the skag. So anyway, I am using a clamp here and I've used my air rivet gun and I'll get that done and then I can put the skis on. Something I recommend you guys do when you have your skis off is pull the bushings out. These have been in here 720 miles and the one is a little bit sticky. To, it pushed right out, but it's a little bit sticky. You can tell they've got rust on them. So I'm gonna grease these up. Or I'm gonna clean them up, grease them up, and then I'll put them back in and get this thing back together so I can ride it this afternoon. So there we go. <clears throat> Finally, all done. I'm digging the look. See how they appear from the front of the sled. I think these are gonna be awesome. Something I'm gonna pay attention to just wondering if I may end up getting some alders jammed in here. I can see maybe wanting to have a rivet on either side, you know, to prevent that from happening. But we'll just see how they work.